Hello friends, welcome to our very own channel, Amu and You, where I am Amu and I love narrating stories to all of you. I have been narrating stories for little children and I just thought that there is a child in each one of us. So why not narrate stories that the older people can also enjoy listening to? So today, the story that I have for you is an age-old classic by the very, very amazing author, Munshi Premchan. The name of the story is God Lives in the Punch. Of course, it's a story of a village where Jumman Sheikh and Algu Chaudhary were fast friends. They were such good friends that there was tremendous mutual faith in each other. And when either of them was absent, the other looked about his household. When Jumman went on the Hajj and Algu had to go abroad on business, both of them looked after each other's work and family in their absence. The friendship dated from the days of their childhood, when Algu sat for his lessons at the feet of Jumman's father, who always believed, don't spare the rod or you'll spoil him. That bore fruit and Jumman was highly esteemed in the village later for his academic skills. Now, while Juman was highly esteemed in the village for his literary qualifications and attainments, Algu was known for being a very, very hardworking person who had earned a lot of wealth and was respected. Now, Jumman had an old maternal aunt who had some property. This she transferred to him by a deed on the understanding that she would be well looked after. So long as the deed remained unregistered, none was so obliging to the old lady as her nephew. No surprises. None so considerate to her. Her every wish was anticipated and cheerfully carried out. But everything changed the moment the deed was registered. Juman, who used to wait dotingly on his aunt, now became supremely indifferent. His wife Kariman went even further. She grudged even the little food that the old lady ate. No meal was now served to her without Kariman letting loose a barb or two dipped in gall or poison. The very bread that the aunt ate seemed to be seasoned with the meat of abuse. And this went on mounting. The things that Kariman would say, how long is this old hag going to live? by giving us a few acres of feast land. She thinks she has bought us. She's a great lady who can't swallow a morsel without her dal being seasoned with ghee. We could have purchased a whole village with the amount of money we spent on feeding her. Patience has its limits. One day, unable to bear this constant nagging and insult from his wife, the aunt spoke to Juman. Juman flatly refused to interfere in household affairs. At length, the aunt's patience gave way. She called Juman and told him, My son, it is clear there is no room for me in your house. 
you had better give me a small allowance so that i can set up a separate kitchen does money grow on trees replied juman tartly of course not but how am i to live pleaded the aunt who said that you had conquered death taunted juman gravely the aunt now exasperated threatened to take her case before the panchayat nothing could please juman better he knew that the panchayat could give one decision and one only for was there anyone in the village whom he had not obliged surely the members of the panchayat would be his friends and not angels from heaven for days after the incident the old woman could be seen leaning on her poor staff going about from one villager to the other to enlist their sympathy with her body doubled up with age weak and infirm dragging her unwilling feet she persisted in her mission there was no one into whose ear she could did not pour out her pitiable tale but to no use some advised her to make it up with her nephew what more did she need they said than a few morsels and to pass her days in prayer they said the numbers who felt genuinely pity for her was very very small one indeed at last the aunt came to algu panting from the exertion of the journey she rested a while and then explained the object of her mission I have come to you my son she said to ask you to attend the panchayat when the matter comes up since you insist i will come kaki said algu but you will have to excuse me if i don't take any part in the proceedings why so my son because as you know juman is my old friend i can ill afford to go against him but is it right my son that for his sake you should keep your mouth shut and not say what you feel what you consider to be just and fair when our conscience is asleep we may not be conscious of the wrong we do unwittingly but challenge your conscience wake it up and you will find that it puts up with nothing that is unfair and this is what exactly that happened with algu the panchayat was scheduled to be held in the evening under the village tree as the sun set the proceedings of the panchayat began all the punches had taken their seats the aged aunt rose and thus addressed them you know members of the panchayat that 3 years ago i executed a deed in favor of my nephew juman transferring all my property to him juman on his part promised to maintain me for a long time i have been subjected to abuse insults and naggings from his wife without any help from juman things now have come to such a pass that it is no longer possible for me to live with him i am denied food and clothes i am a helpless widow too poor to run to the court for redress all i can do is to appeal to you for justice 
please advise me what to do. Punish me if I am in the wrong. But if you find fault with Juman, correct him. I solemnly assure you that I shall faithfully carry out your orders. Now, the voice of the punch is the voice of God, replied Juman. Let my aunt herself nominate the head punch. I shall abide by her decision. Because from my side, I have taken care of her to the best of my capabilities. And I have seen her many a times. Quarreling on petty issues with my wife. It is unfair to put up with such fighting and quarreling in the household vitiating the atmosphere. I don't have that much money to give her allowance that she is asking for. Please let the punch decide. My son, fear God, said aunt. The punch knows neither friend nor enemy. If you don't trust anyone to be the head punch, don't propose any name. But what do you say to Algo Chaudhary being the head punch? Chuman was not prepared for this good luck. Hiding his secret joy, he replied. Very well, if you must have him, have him. It is all the same to me, whether you nominate Algu Chaudhary or Ramadhan Mishra. This is how Algu Chaudhary became the head punch. Algu did not wish to be dragged into the dispute, now demurred and said, Aunt, you are not unaware of my relations with Juman, are you? I know them very well, my son, she replied. But I also know that you will not kill your conscience for the sake of friendship. Allah lives in the heart of the punch and his voice is the voice of the punch. And Algu could not say anything else. So, after a brief discussion, Algu now began his address. Sheikh Jumman, you and I are old friends. Whenever any of us was in trouble, the other came to help. Now I am a punch, you and your aunt are equal in my eyes. Do you have anything to say in your defense? Juman rose and said, whatever I had to say, I have already said that for the last three years, I have been looking after my aunt along with my wife. God is witness that I have kept my word. I have obeyed her just like a son. It is my duty to serve her. But she claims for a monthly maintenance allowance, which is beyond me, and her property does not yield that much. Besides, there was no mention of this in the deed as well. So the punch can please decide and let us know of its decision. Algu Chaudhary said, Jumman Sheikh, the members of the panchayat have gone into the matter most carefully and it has been considered that you are liable to pay to your aunt a fixed monthly allowance out of the realization from her property. 
if you do not comply with this decision, the deed transferring her property to you will be deemed void. Chumman was stunned. The words fell on his ears like a thunderbolt. He could not understand. The friend on whom he relied so much had suddenly turned into a bitter foe. No praise was now too high for Algu and his sense of fairness and justice. Algu has divided truth from falsehood as a swan separates milk from water. He was praised by many in the village. It is only honest men like Algu who sustain the earth or it would have sunk under the ocean long ago were the remarks that he got. As a result of the panchayat's verdict, the strong roots of the tree of friendship with Jumman and Algu had planted together were now sorely shaken up. Now the roots, instead of going deep into the solid earth, were loosely held in sand. And Jumman, in his thoughts, kept on thinking of an opportunity to avenge, avenge himself on Algu for his dark, dark treachery. Algu had purchased a year ago from the Bateshwar Fair a pair of fine bullocks. With their beautiful long curved horns and western breed, they were for months the envy and the rage of the whole village. But as ill luck would have it, one of the bullocks died. Algu had now no use for the other, so he decided to sell it. There lived in the village one Samju Sahu, a cart driver, who carried on his business between the village and the town. He thought to himself that if he could get Algu's bullock, he would able to make more trips between the village and the town, hence multiplying his earnings. At least three or four trips daily to the town and back, that would swell his pockets. So he purchased it on the understanding that he would pay the price in a month's time, hoping to multiply his income several times and finding the bullock strong and hefty. Samju Sahu began to overwork it. Three trips to the town were now his daily routine and sometimes even four. How different from its life at Algu's was faced by the bullock now. There it was used only occasionally. A servant would look after him constantly and his body was rubbed well twice a day. No wonder it had grown fat and strong and always looked fresh. But now instead of rest and care, it was one unceasing round of trips to and from the town. And on top of it came starvation. It was not even fed well. In a month's time, the poor bullock was reduced to a skeleton. It could hardly drag the cart. And when it would, would fail to do so, or it would slow down, a shower of blows invariably descended on its aching limbs. One day, when the bullock was already dead tired from three trips, Sahu loaded the cart with twice the normal weight of its fourth trip of the day. Jaded and tired out, the poor animal strained its utmost to move the cart, but failed. It tried, but could not proceed more than a few yards. Sahu, as usual, began to rain down his blows, till on account of severe punishment, it received and the tired limbs that were overstrained, the bullock tottered and collapsed. Sahu still would not stop till 
the poor animal welcome death now sahu did not know what to do he looked around for help but none was forthcoming it was getting dark it was not the loss of the bullock which troubled him he, it was the dreaded fact that the cart carried a large quantity of ghee gur and salt which in terms of money meant much and in addition he had on his person about 250 rupees which he had realized from the day's sale of village goods with no other option tying his purse around his waist like a belt sahu sat there with his chillum and charcoal till midnight came wearied with the day's work and his misfortune he soon began to doze off and was fast asleep not till daybreak did he awake casually passing his hand round his waist to his horror he discovered all his money was gone he ran to his cart only to find that the tins of ghee gur everything were gone overwhelmed with grief he flung himself on the ground and wept bitterly at this huge loss he had lost almost all his life save one day several months after the bullock's death algu thought to remind sahu about the bullock's price this was enough to make sahu and his wife fly at him like mad dogs look at the fellow's brazenness he sold us a dead beast and now he wants us to pay for it algu kept on trying repeatedly and at last not wanting to give up his claim he had to approach the panchayat the panchayat was set again both parties started vigorous canvassing in their support when the full panchayat had assembled nominations were proposed for the head panch turning to algu he inquired if he had any particular man in view algu replied meekly no let sahu propose thereupon sahu gladly took the name of his own man i nominate sheik jumman now algu's mind was shocked hearing the name of jumman it was a severe blow he was asked have you algu any objection to sahu's nomination what could he say he said none whatsoever and so jumman became the head punch we become conscious of our weakness the moment we are placed in some responsible position we then try to prove equal to the task and this is exactly what happened with sheik jumman the moment he became head punch he suddenly became conscious of the gravity of his office seated in that high place he knew he had to hold the balance even to sift right from wrong to utter nothing which might even remotely be constructed as being fair he could not allow anything to be construed as unjust and fair he must not allow his personal feeling to swerve him one hair's breadth from the path of truth algu and sahu now stated their respective cases after hearing the punches came to the unanimous decision that sahu should compensate algu the only issue on which they differed was 
whether Algu was entitled to the full price of the bullock or whether taking into consideration of the severe losses, there could be some reduction in the price. Two punches were for the former and two were for the latter. It was now left for the head punch to decide. Juman delivered the judgment, addressing the parties, he said, Algu Chaudhary and Samju Sah, the punches have heard you and considered the issues carefully. It is their decision that Algu is entitled to the full price of the bullock. For the time when he sold it, it suffered from no disease or disability. If Samju had then paid the price, the issue now before the panchayat would never have arisen at all. The death of the bullock was caused by overwork and want of proper care. Algu is in no wise to blame. And this should be a lesson for all. Algu could no longer contain his feelings. He stood up and shouted over and over again, victory to the panchayat, victory to the panchayat. Everyone was now loud in praise of Juman. This is what justice means. Soon afterwards, Juman came up to Algu and embracing him said, since the last panchayat, I have been your sworn enemy. Today I realized what it was to be a panch, that he has no private feelings of his own, that he knows neither friend nor foe. All that matters to him is to administer justice. I am convinced now that the panch speaks the voice of God. Algu broke down and wept on Juman's shoulders. The tears shed that day washed away all the dirt and misunderstanding between the two friends. And the friendship became once again fresh and deep and long lasting. A simple and such a beautiful story, isn't it? If you liked it, kindly like, share, subscribe, press the bell icon and your comments would be very welcome. I would take leave. Thank you for listening to the story and watching the video. I will come to you back soon with another story. Thank you. Stay safe, stay blessed.